All right. Seems to be a lot of interest on the YouTube and eBay communities for these uh, air-cooled diesel engines, the China diesels. So figured I'd make a little video explaining uh, some of the things I've learned, a little tips and tricks. Uh, right here, we got the 10 horsepower off eBay. Um, first thing you'll notice is it's pretty big, and yeah, it's on a rototiller. I was bored and I had a welder, go figure. Um, but it actually turned out pretty well to kind of test the thing and figure out what its strengths and weaknesses are. Um, quality control on these is pretty much, you know, I don't want to say non existent, but it's pretty low. So when you get it out of the box, expect to do a little tinkering. Um, when I first started it up, had a little fuel leak here on the injector pump. Uh, this was only hand tight, so torquing it down a little bit, fix that. And then after running it for a while, you may notice some of these cover bolts here. Uh, they might come loose. And more importantly, you got two head bolts and two more under this cover. Uh, definitely retort these after running a couple hours. Is uh, a friend of mine bought one. He had a head bolt come loose. No damage. Simply just tighten it up. That's all you need to do. Um, another thing is idling. Uh, my friend's engine, which is also 10 horse, idled very well. Um, mine did not idle. It would not, the RPMs wouldn't come down as much as you expect. Um, below a certain point, it would just slowly spin down and stall. Uh, what I found was there's a spring in here for your governor, and each coil of the spring was actually touching. So it wasn't stretching properly. So what I did is I actually stretched the spring enough so where the coils actually have a small gap, and it's a lot more sensitive on this other lever that actually does the fueling. And now I can bring the idle down very low. It's pretty nice. Um, when you first run it, you'll notice it uh, definitely smokes. Um, I don't know what they do at the factory to adjust any of that, if anything. But this, there's a fueling screw. It's this big screw. It's the max amount of fuel it lets. This was all the way turned out, probably because it's 10 horsepower, so they figure to open it wide up. Um, I actually turned this in some because I didn't actually like how much smoke it was creating. And, you know, smoke is pretty much waste fuel, so it's no good. Of course, once messing with the spring and the fueling, you're going to have to readjust your max RPM back to where it's supposed to be. Um, other thing I would say is definitely run this for five minutes, drain the oil. You'll notice because the quality control for the cleaning. I don't know how they clean these after machining, but there's a lot of metal shavings in the oil. Um, so run it for five minutes, drain the oil, put new oil in, and then come around to this side. Uh, and you can see you got your starter, which is pretty much as big as the starter on my car. It's kind of scary. Um, you got your generator here. This, I don't know how many amps you could, or how much load you could put on there, um, but it's definitely enough to keep your battery charged, maybe run one or two little accessories. And again, once you drain the oil, you got this little cap here. This is an oil filter. So I'd say after five minutes, make sure this is clean in here because most of the shavings end up in here, which is good. Um, but you don't want to let any of the shavings pass here into your oil pump and then all under your bearings so definitely pull this out as much as you can and clean it out with a rag um, and then blow out there's a little filter you can blow that out with a compressor um, besides that not much else to say uh, you'll definitely notice over gasoline much more fuel efficient it has much much better usable torque over any RPM uh, it's very hard to stall out, uh, which generally is what you need when running any kind of equipment. So this has been sitting for about a month, hasn't been started. It's decently, it's a nice day, it's pretty warm out, it's not cold. I have started this 
<coughs> and um, around 15 degrees Fahrenheit weather. Uh, it actually started pretty well as long as you have a decent battery because you're going to need to crank it over a couple times uh, to build up the heat to get the get the fire over. But it definitely, I wouldn't be too concerned about cold starting. I mean, it definitely starts not uh, unacceptable. So this has been sitting for about a month here. I think our fuel's on. Uh, let's try and start it and see what happens. Got the lever here for the gas. Crank that up a little. Belt's disengaged. And I've yet to install a starter switch, so we're going to use this little jumper cable here. Alright, let's see what happens. Nothing yet. That's about it. So you can see my battery is running a little, little low there. 